So there, good afternoon, grade 12. This will be our meeting for an official lesson in research project. In this lesson, I'm going to share to you a screen because that contains a PowerPoint presentation of the topic that's going to be discussed this afternoon. But before we proceed, let's remind ourselves of the rules that should, that should happen by the time we begin our class. While you have not been asked to say anything yet, I would like to request that you set yourselves on mute. And then if your internet connection allows it, please make your cameras open, on, or available. And then most importantly, I'd like to also remind uh, everybody that the, med the medium of instruction here is English. So that should always be our language of communication. Should, they, should there be questions from any of you? Should you want to point out things that you want me to address, you want me to address, then please don't forget to speak in the English language. Please do not be surprised if you'll find two accounts of myself in this call. You'll find one that contains purely an audio of myself, a video of myself, and the other one would be for my audio. Oops. Sir, check this here. It's recorded. So I'll now share to you a screen. By the way, Ben Sabine, how's your computer camera? Uh, how's, the, how's the internet there? Will it not allow for you to share your camera? Or open on e or turn your camera on? Ben Sabine? Ivan? Ivan, can you hear me, Ivan? I think the internet reception is quite a problem there. So allow, just, allow, just allow me to share a screen. Can you all see this? Uh, please unmute yourselves. Can you all see this? Yes, yes sir. sir. Uh, I'd like to confirm from you that you can really see what I am sharing already on the screen. For a while, it's still loading, still loading up. Can you, what about this one? Can you see this? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So we begin. This first lesson is about the introduction to research and with that would be the definitions of research as well as of basic and applied research. In fact, for so many times now, quite a number of students were already worried on why research has still yet to be done or that research has to be done from a younger age. If I were in the shoes of these students or of a particular student complaining on this matter, I would actually rather look at what research could provide me. I mean, the help that it could provide me, and in extension, what I can provide to the community where I belong. So many of the things around us, so many of the problems around us would not have been solved, would not have been addressed, if not for research. Thanks to research, good solutions have been created to address alarming concerns and pressing problems. You, I mean, you could not expect people to just simply decide that problem A can be, solution, can be, can be solved by this solution without even trying to assess if that solution works in, uh, sorry, if that solu solution fits the criteria to a particular problem that needs to be addressed. To answer this, research has to be done. To be able to know whether that solution could fit well, to be able to know if that solution could run, could have longer benefits in the long run, research has to be done. But of course, we get to, re we get to ask ourselves, what is research in the first place? What, did, what is it to begin with? I'd like us to start with the origin of research. 
Of the many etymologies of research, I'd like to present to you one which is of a French origin, telling us that research comes from the word. Anybody from you who would like to pronounce this word? Can I request Nick? Nick, you can probably and you can unmute yourself. Can you please pronounce that please that French word for us? Researcher. I understand. <laughs> it's, it's it's all right. It's all right if you pronounce if you pronounce it as researcher. So many would pronounce it as researcher. Others would pronounce it as researcher. I tried listening to it from Google, and then Google pronounced it as researcher. So that's how it sounded. I would not even say that my pronunciation is actually that correct, but perhaps what would matter most to me is that we get the spelling right for the purpose. If this comes out in an exam, for the purpose of an exam, at least we know how to spell the word right. So there you have it. The word research, thank you, Nick. The word research comes from a French word, which is recherche, and that word means to search after or investigate. The etymological definition of research um, already gives a hint of what people do by the time they in involve themselves into this activity called research. They investigate, they try to look at how things have come into be, they try to provide explanations on why a particular phenomenon has occurred, they also try to look to why such a thing is true to a particular instance or circumstance, or that why this condition is true only to a particular environment. After of investigation, it's a matter of searching after. Etymologically speaking, that is research. But allow me to also give you a complete definition of research. That research is described to be systematic and careful investigation undertaken to determine or establish facts and or relationships. In that definition, I what are these words? You have patient, systematic, and careful. Let us begin with research being described as a patient investigation. Have you all gotten a copy of the module for research project? Have we already they are received a copy of that? Grade 12? Grade okay. 12? Okay. In the case of Red, I'm not yes, sure sir. though if, if I think I haven't seen everyone get their copies this morning. Mother. Mother. In case just in case you wanted to really take down notes, I would even encourage you to do that because per, perhaps there will be a lot of things that I'm going to mention in this discussion which you could not find in the paper that you already received or will still receive from IA. So let me go back. Why is research considered a patient investigation? Truth is, the truth is research requires time. And you cannot expect that you be able to finish your research. If you wish to do a quality research paper, you can't expect to have it finished right away in a week or two. It involves so much time. Part of its being a patient investigation will be the thing that you did before, revisions. Revisions, revisions, revisions. Others, after having revised thrice or four times, will still even have to go through a fifth revision. So the group of Chrisel, um, Miguel, and who's the third one? Steve? Chrisel, are you group mates? With, are, are you a group mate of Steve? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. I just received this morning the your research. So that is just to also inform you. I have yet to put, to put corrections if there is a correction on your paper. So going back, even if the, if the research paper has already been revised thrice or four times, that is not you to say that the paper is already free from any error. Let's go to RISA. Remember, Rai, when you came to IA, when was the last time that you came to IA last week? And then you showed me your paper, which we both thought 
yeah, we both thought that your paper was already fine. What did we discover, Rai? So much fluff. <laughs> there are still a lot of things that can be done. But of course, the patient element that we can find in research is not only in the matter of doing revisions. It is really on the task itself. The time is such a factor that helps determine the success of your research paper. In relation to time, imagine, imagine this. I have a master's thesis right now, which is on public speaking. It's, the, it's anchored on public speaking, which is to be done in a real world setup where people speak in front of an audience. Not in an online manner, but in a manner where they could physically see each other without the use of any gadget. However, because of this pandemic crisis that we are going through, the time that we are experiencing right now is posing itself as a challenge for me. And if I, should, if I would proceed with that study being done at this point in time, I just might not be able to, to obtain a valid set of information or data. Which is why I have decided that for this semester, I will not yet enroll to, to my, uh, for a master's thesis class. I just needed one semester to finish my master's degree. I just chose not to because the, the, this period right now probably, most probably will yield data which are going to be questionable and not as objective and valid as how I wish the data to be compared to a regular school year. I can't really say if a student speaks in front of a camera for public speaking, I can't really say if a student speaks in front, in front of the camera and then his or her classmates are listening through Zoom, that's how public speaking really works. I can't justify it because the student could probably be too prepared for a material that is not supposed to be delivered in that manner. I'm not saying that a student must not be prepared for public speaking. My concern is what if it comes out to be too scripted when it's supposed to be a memorized speech? Then when it's supposed to be a memorized speech, a copy is actually placed on, part, on the part of the screen which I could not see. So to avoid these worries and uncertainties, I decided that I have to be patient in finishing my master's degree. I will not enroll as of this time. I'll wait for the perfect time, for the right time, when I could obtain the needed data, valid data. So that's research being a patient investigation. Time is such a big factor. Because of this as well, I also have to uh, inform you of this, research can be a long-term research or a short-term research. Short-term researches are the ones that you did in your PR1 and 2, PRs1 and 2. The one that you'll do in research project also qualifies as a short-term research. But when you do a lot, uh, when you do these dissertations, when you do these archaeological researches, anthropolo uh, anthropology, research, anthropology studies, don't expect to have them finished in just a year or two. Sometimes it takes a lot of years for one to be able to finish these kinds of research works. Another description for research is that it is a systematic investigation. Why would people consider research a systematic investigation? Research procedures. You cannot you cannot just simply jump from one step to another in what in just because you wanted your paper to be done you have you have to follow a series of just like a scientific investigation just like what you do in science when you do experiments there are procedures that need to be followed or observed these procedures these steps provide the steps to follow if someone jumps from point A to point C without considering or doing point B, the researcher should better expect that the data can probably be questionable. If someone jumps again from point A to point C without looking at point B or step B, the researcher should expect that the readers 
might formulate a lot of doubts and questions by the time they look into the research work. That is why the systematic aspect of research reminds researchers to follow the correct procedures. In your PRs 1 and 2, you have this represented as the data gathering procedures part. In IMRAD, we refer to this as the methods. Another, classic, another description that we provide for research is that it is a careful investigation. Why should we be careful what, by the time we do research? First, there are information that are in our hands. These information are what we call as the research data. If you tamper with these data, it follows. You can arrive at valid results. If you're expecting for results to be positive, like for instance, what is the effect of good study, what, sorry, what are the study habits of the students and what are the effects of these study habits on the academic performance of the students? If beforehand, you have already been predisposed to a positive result, and then it came out that the results, after having gathered your data, it came out that the results weren't positive. That's something that you just have to face. You do not tamper the data just so your expectations would be met. This also reminds you as researchers that when you do your gathering of data, you should also be careful in choosing the right procedures. You should also be careful in choosing the right people to where, oh, sorry, from where you can get these research data or information. You just might be tapping people who actually have nothing to do with the paper or you, they felt like they should be part of it, but they did not respond in an honest manner. For instance, in the distribution of a questionnaire, probably the student just respond, uh, a student responded, a student responded just answered randomly or blindly your questionnaire, thereby yielding results which you later on tabulated only to find out that the results are invalid. The data that you have are very crucial and critical, and you cannot just simply tamper with it. Another thing in the careful element or careful aspect of research is that you need to consider a lot of limitations by the time you do your work, especially when it comes to people as your respondents. You have to be careful when you deal with other people aside from yourselves as researchers. You can't just ambush them if you want them to take part of your research paper. You can't just simply pull them out because if they say no, there's just nothing you can do. May I just know, during your PR2, did you meet some form of resistance from the respondents? I'd like to ask the group of Joyce. Joyce? Sir. Oh, yeah. To the group of Joyce. Are you a group mate like Senate of Joyce, Raisa, and the fourth one? Troy, sir. Troy. Uh, in, your, in your case, um, Lex. When you distributed your questionnaire for P during your PR2 class, when you distributed your questionnaire, did you stop the stats from your pundits? Again, sir, I can't, I can't hear it. Sir. Sorry. Did you meet some form of resistance from your respondents on that at that time you, just, you gave them the questionnaire? Um, yes, sir. Can Sorry. you please elaborate? What happened there? Those students that they don't have parents who support to their ah, study, okay. sir. Yeah. Your study was on parental involvement, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's a possible area for resistance because a student might say, no, I will not answer this because I cannot relate to it. That's already because... a resistance. Yes. And the thing is, as researchers, you can't just simply force them to answer your respondent, right? Unless you did. Right? In your group, right, did you force them to really answer your questionnaires? Yes. 
you force them in a way kay like na uban mo sabi no ang ana ka like they say na speak in english know? because it's recorded everything is recorded i mean some people kay they say na they don't want to answer because they're tired you know? so we just tell them you answer na lang then you just was also there so you just was there to warn them na uh, you answer na lang the research okay let's let's try to turn it let's be euphemistic about it let's try to turn it as facilitated forcing you forced them but you were still there to facilitate and monitor their way of answering your questionnaire besides from your story the reason perhaps from them isn't as viable because they're just purely tired not unless sorry that's a wrong expression unless it was going to tap a traumatic experience for instance the example ha, what if a researcher was talking about the effect oh no the lifestyle of rape victims qualitative research then the topic is the lifestyle of rape victims of course who do you think should be the qualified research participants of that study troy is troy there Troy, who should be the rightful research participants in that study? Uh, those students that have parents. Again? Those students that are living with their parents. Students? Hey, what the? Again, Troy, all that I said is lifestyle of rape victims. Huh? Ay, you are not listening. Assuming that that's the research problem, research title, Troy. The who do you think Troy would serve as a good re research participant? Describe. You have your? Victims. The victims of rape. Yes. And what if the researcher tapped into one, but that researcher was hesitant because slowly the, the respondent, the participant, was able to recall the experiences, the traumatic and horrible experiences that she had or he had before. So that's a problem. And that's something that researchers need to be careful of. You can't again just simply tap on anybody because there might be a background uh, incident that might be traumatic on the respondent's end that that respondent might choose not to, uh, to, to involve him or herself in your paper. So see, research is a patient, systematic, and careful investigation. For what reason is it being done? To determine or establish facts and or relationships. It's possible that your research paper is one that creates a new or shares a new knowledge. Or you might have known of a particular knowledge or truth and you want to establish the truthfulness of this claim in a different situation or circumstance. That is why research can also be replicated, which we will talk about later on. So that's a matter of research being described as a patient, systematic, careful investigation undertaken to determine or establish facts and or relationships. What are then the characteristics of research? First, you have research being empirical. Why do people consider research as an empirical endeavor? Because research is based on experiences and observation. Researchers look at the things around them. These things that surround us provide ideas on what should be studied. Our senses help us gather information on how we could, on, on, to, for us to arrive on what we can study in a particular research paper. And by the time we have arrived at a topic, we rely as well again on our senses and our observation to be able to look into the data that best fit the, the study that you want to accomplish. Second characteristic, Research is believed to be a logical work. It is to be logical because it is 
going to follow a valid series of steps, procedures, principles. It can't just jump from one point to another. Research follows good transition. There's sense, there's so much sense on how that research works, that how it progresses. Research is also described to be cyclical. That's another characteristic of research. From the root word, cycle. As it is seen to be a cycle, research tends to repeat its process. And by that, what we mean is, research begins with a problem and ends with a solution. But that's not the, 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 the absolute end of research. So it's like this. Problem, solution. Then that solution provides an opportunity for another research to be done. What makes this solution a good solution? Could there be a better solution? What are the strengths and weaknesses of this solution? See, the solution that we have devised for the previous problem is now yielding another set of questions or problems, which would mean another research. Now that this will lead to another research, it allows the researcher to come up with another solution, another answer. And that answer leads to a possible problem again. And it goes on and on and on. So research need not meet an end right away. Another characteristic of research, it's, it is anal analytical, the skill in analysis. One needs to develop that skill by the time a research paper is going to be done. It needs to follow analytical procedures in gathering the data, in choosing the right treatment. In cho you, need to devise, yeah, you need to devise a good set of reasons on why you have arrived at the choice of respondents. You need to really analyze why that variable that you're studying on is worth the topic to be discussed in your paper. So many researchers right now have revolved on a limit on a particular set of variables. So many variables have already been studied. And if you wish to study that variable again, be sure that you have analyzed well what that variable still needs. Because hopefully, that's what your research paper can provide. Next characteristic of research, it is critical. In the same way that research is described as a careful investigation, you have to also be sure that you need to, you remember it's BA, a critical undertaking. As a critical undertaking, there needs to, you need, there needs to be precise judgment that has to be developed by the research by the researcher next characteristic research is also methodical from the word method the word method suggests that there is a system in research there are procedures there's a series of steps there's a method that needs to be observed in order for one to successfully do research without following that method, by not following that method, the researcher could not expect, should not expect to get quality results. Lastly, research has a characteristic which sometimes is mistaken to be the other word. Replicability should not be misconstrued as duplicability. In research, we do not allow duplication. However, we allow students to do replications. Remember this definition of research earlier? This area. I hope you can see this part that I'm encircling. This area allows the replication of research if what you want to do is establish the truthfulness of a particular claim in several circumstances. For instance, you found that academic performance 
is highly affected by students' love towards a subject. Then perhaps, oh no, sorry, by elementary students' love for a subject. Then perhaps if you want to replicate the study, you will look into how high school students feel. Because the original study was for research, uh, sorry, was for elementary students. This time it will be for high school students. And if you want, if another researcher wishes to replicate it, then the student, that researcher can focus for high college students. Replication is accepted. A duplication is not. A duplicate of a research work yields no difference from the original work. Let's have a simple analogy for this. Imagine a key. How does a duplicate of a key look like? I'll ask, who will I ask? Uh, Nicole. Yes, sir. How does a duplicate of a key look like? Just like the same with the original key, sir. Is there a difference between the duplicate and the original key? No, I think nothing, sir. None, correct? No, none, 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 sir. None. There's none. Nothing can be seen as a difference between the duplicate and the original key. However, if someone, thank you, Nicole, if someone tells you to replicate a key, what that person is actually telling you is you create a key which may not have the same grooves as the other key. But you are just creating another key. That's a replication. A duplicate would mean the creation of the same key. A replication would mean a creation of another key. But have you created another uh, a key? Yes. Is it the same as the other key? No. Then people ask, people might ask why? Because what you've just made is just a replication of that key, not a, dupli a duplicate of that key. The same applies for research. We allow replications. We do not allow duplications. Question so far? Any question? Sir. Yes, Lexine. What are the goals of research? The goals of research. Here's the question. Uh, here's the question from Lexine. Let's bring ourselves back to this. Why do people research? On the definition, is on the original definition of research, people do it because they want to determine or establish facts and or relationships. However, Lex, Lexine. Next it. Yes, sir. However, there is going to be another answer later on by the time we touch on, by the time we deal with basic research and applied research. But since your question is on the uh, goal of research, I'll answer it as of this time with this, that research is done to determine or establish facts and or relationships. Thank you, sir. That's, I'll give you for now a general answer because the question you also raised was of a general concern on what the, per, what the goal of research is. I, think that, I hope that answers your question for now. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Next, uh, after discussing the characteristics of research, we will now touch basic research. And you should, be, you should not be surprised, you have already done basic research. Basic research is known as pure or fundamental research. It is the kind of research that you have done or that you do when people would teach, especially in school, when teachers ask you information. For instance, UCSP, remember UCSP? Uh, that subject did not ask you to do research. It did not because the teacher there was so kind. The teacher there at that time would not even give you SPs right away after a discussion. Just imagine UCSP. 
A good example for basic research in, for a UCSD subject is what define a family or what are the elements that help the preservation of culture. And then what would students do? They will browse on, from books or, or they would online and then answers are provided. That is a pure kind of research or a fundamental type of research. Why would students do basic research? Basic research is done because people might want to formulate a theory. There might be a knowledge that they want to introduce. For as long as they are not concerned with the practical application of that knowledge. Since that knowledge that's obtained is going to simply expand a theory. For instance, uh, what, let's try to concretize this. UCSP again, let's use UCSP as an example. The question is, what are the what is a family? What are the elements that may of a what what elements make up a family? Before going online, before browsing from books, surely your mind has already thought of possible answers or opinions on what a family is. Even without writing it yet, for sure your minds could only think of ideas of what makes a family, of the elements that make a family. By the time you went online, by the, by the time you decided to browse for answers from your readings or from books, you found that the answers you have already thought of actually are correct. So what happened there was you expanded your theory, or if not, you affirmed the theory that you have already developed inside your head. If it has been added by new information, the theory that you thought of actually got expanded. There was an expansion of ideas, ideas that you already developed, but were expanded by the readings that you got since a basic research task was given to you. And take note, this basic or fundamental or pure research has no considerations for practical application. It ends here. It ends with a desire to satisfy your, to satisfy your cravings for knowledge. It's knowledge for knowledge's sake. However, there may be people that are not going to be satisfied with just knowing things. Some would even go as far as knowing whether what they've known helps solve a pressing problem or issue in the community. And to that, they create what we call as applied research. They do applied research. Again, this research is geared towards finding a solution for an immediate problem. The word immediate here can be seen in several perspectives. One, you can see it as a problem that's timely and that it should be addressed right away. Immediate, me, me, um, immediate meaning it is what's really going on as of, as of the moment and that it should be responded to right away. That problem can also be considered immediate if that problem exists in your community in a community, in the locality where you belong. And since you are part of it, you want to help solve the issue. You want to contribute something so that the issue gets resolved. A problem that's, being imme that's immediate. Applied research aims for the practical application of knowledge. So this is now a step beyond basic research. After obtaining some form of knowledge, Applied research would like to see how this knowledge comes to be applicable in a particular instance. To see how that knowledge helps solve a particular problem or concern. Another way of differentiating basic and applied research would be in terms of these three contexts, uh, in these three categories. We can differentiate the, them according to purpose, context, 
and methods. In terms of purpose, like what was already said earlier, basic research is aimed for the expansion of knowledge. If not expansion, it, it's aimed for the formulation of knowledge. While applied research is ma made to address a problem, and that's by providing a solution. Um, Lex, let me go back to your question earlier. Let's see that. Yes, sir. This is now the specific answer that I'd like to give to you. This, I think, has something to do with your question earlier. Sir, what is the purpose of research or what is the goal of research? Now let's use the question here. What is the goal of basic research? Again, it's for the creation, formulation, or expansion of knowledge. And for applied research, it is for the creation of a solution to a specific problem. I hope that answers your question, Lex. Lex, it? Yes, sir. Okay. Let's go to context as the next category of differentiating basic research and applied research. In terms of context, basic research is self-initiated while applied research is set by clients or sponsors. But take note, sometimes this may actually overlap, meaning that's the desire to do research or to expand one's knowledge probably could be brought about by the demand provided by a client or sponsor. As in your case, students, why is basic research considered self-initiated? Since it is geared for the expansion or formulation of knowledge, that's more or less on the person's desire and to determine how how satisfied oh, sorry and to know whether that research is satisfying yet or not we only have the research the researcher to ask we only have the researcher to determine whether the knowledge that he has created or the knowledge that he has been able to relearn or learn is enough because if the researcher says that it's yet to be expanded or developed that self-initiated desire sets basic research different from applied research. In some cases, research may also be set by a client or a sponsor, meaning someone else might have to tell you to do research. For instance, student. Who from you, I'd like to know, through a raising of hands, raising of hands, and I'd like you to be very honest, Please be very honest with me. Who from you here, from your class, wants or has the desire, the sincere desire, or so, not the desire, has a sincere and honest love for research? Who from, let's just be honest. I will, I will not take it against you. Is there no hand being raised? None, really none? Other cameras have been turned off. I I think they have not, even perhaps with those who have turned off their cameras, their hands are not also being raised. Perhaps I can, perhaps as of this time, you have not developed that love for research yet. But take note, mind you people, you can earn from research. Yes, you can earn from research. I got the opportunity of working as a researcher as I was requested by my aunt to help her on the re on a research for the airport in Panglao, for the resettlement site in Panglao. And I earned from it. Back in college, English 19 is our research subject and it's one of my most looked forward to subject. I have been positively anticipating for that subject. As, as ridiculous as it sounds, as weird as it sounds for others, it was that sub, it was English 19 for that semester. It was that subject that I have really been looking forward to. Because research, I understand, yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll agree with you on that. Research is difficult. Research is a challenge, but it doesn't make it impossible. It's that challenge perhaps that drives people to 
perhaps to give it their best to really do more to be satisfied with that desire for research. In your case, students, what I could sense is that there is an overlap between the setting of research by clients or sponsors, because that's what IA is doing. We, you've done research because we told you to do research, right? I think that's how it went. You did research because you've been told to do research. I don't know, but I think no one from you here, yeah, I think no one from you who entered in senior high told the research teacher, sir, let's have research because I so love this task. Did someone do that? I, I think what happened was when the teacher said, this semester you're going to do a research paper, smile, but deep inside you wanted to cry. Research. I've heard of the torments that students felt because of research. But yes, the torment. But the gratification afterwards, that's immeasurable chart. In terms of methods, research and basic research and differ. Basic research is concerned with internal validity, while external validity is the concern of applied research. What do we mean by that? Since basic research is self-initiated, meaning it's up to the researcher whether he gets satisfied or not, it's the researcher who determines whether what he did was sufficient, whether what he did was enough for him as well, or that he was already satisfied of the things that he did in order to achieve that knowledge that he just got. In terms of external validity for applied research, since there is a client or a sponsor that provides or has set the task for you, it's them who also say, it's them who will also say whether what you did was enough. These clients or sponsors will then tell you if what you did was also correct. That's external validity. This is also more applicable for student researches. When you, at that time you did, remember your oral defense PR2? During your PR2, we assess, and then we, the panelists, shared our not shared some information on whether what you did was right or that what you did has yet to be improved. As panelists, as members of the panel, we were your clients or sponsors, and that our ex and that external validity was was given by us, was determined by us. That's it. That's how we differentiate basic research. If you look at your notes, in the module that you receive, you'll find there a lot of things as well. You have the characteristics of basic research and applied research. <clears throat> Sorry. But generally, these information have already been sent in our discussion. I will now uh, stop the sharing of the screen. Any question? Please unmute yourselves now. Unmute yourself. Do we have any question? Hello, no, sir. No. What about from Nick? I'm quite curious from that. Um, the, allow me to also take this time to raise a few a few questions to Nick because he wasn't our student last time. So I'd like to get a background from how research went from his experience. Nick? Yes, sir. What research did you do last time? Was it basic research or applied research? Applied. Applied yeah. research. So what problem did you try to address? We made a program about STI school, sir. Okay. So that's, look at, look at what they're doing. There must be a problem with a system, with the programs of, STI school? Is that an STI mm -hmm. school? So there must be a, pro a problem with a program that they already have. So they created, are, did you create a new one? No, sir. We made a 
website uh, oh, so, about STI. Oh, so that's what the group of was it in a group or an individual work? A group project, sir. So that's what the group of Nick did. They created a website to address the concern. That's applied research. And applying the cyclical characteristic of research, if someone looks into that research paper now, they can study that work of the group of Nick and then see whether, how successful it was. Look into the strengths and weaknesses of the project that they did. And that already leads to another problem. The cyclical characteristic of research is really true. When the group of Nick created that research, it doesn't mean that they are already closing themselves to the possibility of improving the solution. The same goes with the researchers that you did. Let me go to the group of Nicole Alberto. Who's the third member? Nicole Nina, Alberto. Sir. Yeah, okay. Nina. Let's go to the group of Nicole, Alberto, and Dinia. Your study was on the use of projected media. I, I think that's the study. Yes, sir. Oh, that one. I'd like to ask your group, are you open to the possibility that another researcher might want to improve your work? It's okay, sir. See? It's okay, that's sir. a good attitude. That's a really a good attitude. Because as researchers, we are not gods in this field of research. We should be ready because anytime soon, a reader may say there is a limitation in this paper that is needed to that sorry there's a limitation in this paper that needs to be addressed or else this paper remains to be limited too limited we do a researcher might come in i'll improve this paper in terms of this weakness so that we will eliminate this weakness so that's a cyclical process. And in the same way, the, the new researcher is now doing a replication of the study of Nicole. Are they doing a duplication? No. They are not doing the exact same research. They are learning from the study of Nicole, learning from the limitations of their study, and then creating a similar one. That's a replication, not a duplication which we allow you to do. In research project, in this research project class, we do not, I do not demand that you do a, a new study. You can do a replication of another, of a, of an, yeah, a replication of another study. Or if you want, for instance, in the case of RISA, RISA study is on parental involvement. Then if I were RISA, I might want to do parental involvement of, of senior high students. Last time you didn't use the senior high students, right? Uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, right, you didn't use the senior high students. This time, if, if I were you, why don't I use the high, senior high students only? Anyway, there aren't so many of them. And they were not the ones who participated. Grade 12, not grade 11, excluding the grade 11 students because they were the grade 10 students last year. Well, do they? Like, like, like the basic research, like what they did last year, or it will be different? You can also do a basic research. If you want, if you want. What if I, I use lemon, vinegar, and salt? and try to create a stain remover. <laughs> That's a basic research. That's purely on the desire of expanding or formulating a theory, right? That's just on whether, it, that's just trying to know whether these three could really remove stain or which among the three could better remove stain from a piece of cloth. That's an expansion of knowledge. Are you creating a product here? No. Did we say that you are creating a stain remover, calamansi stain remover? Did you create a product? No. 
You just wanted to see which among the three could be more effective in removing state. And that's basic research, which is fine, which is totally fine. So see, you can do basically, and I think it's a good thing that I've introduced basic research and applied research. So that, but at this point, you can more or less gauge which between the two would I find myself more comfortable to do? Will it be applied research or basic research? Or if I do basic research, will I feel gratified by it? Do, do I feel like it's enough? Is it not going to be too easy? What if I try applied research? Will that be too much? You'll have a lot of things to weigh in now. And that's something that we'll have to tackle by next time. It's all time check, it's already 1.31. I think you still have a class after this. So that will be all for now. Any question? Do we have some questions? Sure. Yes, Nathan. Sir, uh, for the research in ABM, sir, should we apply the uh, research only for ABM, like for business uh, research for ABM students only related? That, I, Nate, Nathan, sorry, Nathan. Yes, sir. Yes. Ideally, ideally, that's what you should do. Ideally. Because but it's okay now. For, 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 because the research project is an applied subject. Therefore, the research that you should do here should be more or less aligned to the strand where you belong, ideally speaking. But if it turns out that it's going to be really a challenge, especially because of this crisis that we are going through right now, then who am I to deny you of a research paper that you'll submit, even if it's outside of the strand where you belong? That's it. Thank you, sir. Yeah. The same applies to everyone. For instance, um, one of you here is a daughter of a store owner. Okay. I don't know who that is. Paralipsis. Itago na lang natin siya sa para pangalan na Raisa Juan. For instance, Raisa, a STEM student, might just then want to do a study related to business and commerce. And then she'll study the shopper smart. How the, how the people or the sales ladies in Shoppers Mart do their responsibilities and obligations. If she wants to focus on that, though she's a STEM student, it's fine. It's totally fine. Does that answer your question, Ethan? Yes, sir. Thank you. Are there other questions? We have other questions? If there's none, that would be all for now. Goodbye and thank you. Goodbye and thank you, sir. Goodbye and thank you, sir. Goodbye and thank you, sir.